us this evening for a study talk. This is going to be a little bit different compared to the other seminars you are on. We are not going to do any type of a PowerPoint. It's a bit more like a chat show and a bit of a chat kind of a thing uh, that we're going to do tonight um, instead. And I'm joined by my wonderful colleagues in the US, uh, Jacqueline in Southern California. Myra's also in Southern California. We got Kerry who is not in Chicago, but based from Chicago. She's currently in Philly. And then Elizabeth in New Jersey. Um, Jacqueline and Elizabeth Moira are all uh, college advisors, um, independent and school counsellors. And then Kerry was a student at the University of Galway. And Kerry has a bit of a different perspective compared to the what they call the the standard student coming straight out of high school carry was a mature student applicant so we're going to chat to you about you know what to look for when applying and you know for our wonderful counselors to give advice to students and uh, and build from there so i've got a couple of questions but if anybody wants to jump in and say hi really quickly please do jacqueline do you want to go first and then we go myra carrie and elizabeth sure but the questions that we've got no, no, just jump in and say hi first. I'll ask oh, you, sorry, you guys some questions. Sorry, jump in and say hi. I'm so yeah. sorry. Hello, I'm Jacqueline. I am in Southern California in Irvine and a counselor that's helping. Um, I'm passionate about sending students abroad and especially love the Irish schools. Fabulous. Myra? Hi, I'm Myra Castro. I am the Director of University Relations and College Events at J. Sarah Catholic High School. I've also been independent counseling since 1999. I've been very lucky that I've gotten to go visit Ireland twice on the Education Ireland tour. Fabulous. Carrie, go for it. Yeah, so hi everyone, I'm Carrie. Um, as we've said, I just graduated from the University of Galway as a mature student. I am also currently their rep in the US and Canada. So. <laughs> Fabulous, and Elizabeth. And hello, I'm Elizabeth Roper. I'm a, the Director of College Counseling at Mount St. Mary Academy, um, previously in New York at the Ursuline School. Um, I was fortunate to also be a counselor uh, hosted on the Education in Ireland tour and just um, love to see our students explore and see all the options that are available to them. Uh, it's been great to also talk to some of the students. I volunteer in a community-based organization in the Bronx and to even for those students to even learn about all the opportunities that could be possible for them. Fabulous. Thanks, guys. So we're kicking into this because it's going to be 30 minutes and I do have the gift of the gab so I could keep going and keep going. So it won't keep you too long. Uh, Mara, I'm going to start with you. I'm going to ask you a question really quickly as to what advice would you give to students as a counselor who's thinking of applying overseas? I always tell my students, do it. Like, you know, when you're when you're thinking about doing, you're kind of hesitant, just apply. You know, you could change your mind later, but it's better to change your mind, have options, than regret it later, right? I always tell my students, this is the one time in your life, you're young, you're single, parents are going to uh, pay for you to go away for a few months at a time. So, you know, definitely do it. Um, talking to my students in the past, I think some of their biggest regrets when they've come back after graduating from college, I say, like, what did you what would you have done differently? And most of them will say not going away for college or studying abroad, right? I hear my students who did get to go uh, abroad somewhere. I'm always jealous of them because they get to travel so easily, especially the ones in Europe. They're going to like different country every week. Um, they have friends from around the world now. And, um, you know, and, and most of them, if they think about like why, I'm like I'd rather go to school in the U.S., I feel like I'm going to be missing out. But a lot of the students, when I talked to them, you know, when we went to Ireland, for example, um, what they said is that they realized they didn't miss out on as much as they thought they did, right? Uh, their friends were actually jealous of their experience and then actually came to Ireland to go visit them. So I think that was another thing. Um, Ireland in general, I tell students it's a great place to go. It's English speaking. For the, um, there's no GEs. You go straight to your major. You can work while you're in Ireland and going to school. For a lot of my students, especially from Southern California, they say they want to go to a big city. New York City would probably eat most of them up alive because they've never actually taken public transportation. So I always tell them, like, Dublin is a great city, but it's not as overwhelming as a big city like that. There's lots of um, companies headquartered there. There's no problem getting a job in the U.S. I actually tell my student, if you think, like, you're worried about getting a job back here, go on LinkedIn. See where students from the University of Limerick, 
University College Dublin, where are they getting jobs? And you'll see many of them are getting jobs here in the US. Um, and I think also I tell them it's much different than when we went to college. I think a lot of us here is we are more in a global society, right? So having this experience is gonna give you a leg up when you're applying for a job. Um, and then I think the last thing when I tell students is they're shocked when I tell them how much tuition and room and board are when you go to Ireland. For us in California, the tuition cost for most of the schools is gonna be very comparable go to go to a UC, but guess what? Housing is so much cheaper there. Like that's what's hard for here in California. Housing is like twelve to $15,000 a year where you can be in the UK and pay, you know, not even half that, right? Um, and then be able to use the financial aid here in the U.S. So that's what I usually will tell my students when I when they want to go. That's so wish when I was younger. That is brilliant advice. Um, yeah, and, and as Moira says, the accommodation facilities in Ireland are second to none. And oh, yeah. averaging price, depending on where you're going in in Ireland, um, can be anywhere from six to twelve thousand for the academic year. Um, roughly, give or take, uh, for the accommodation prices, which is which is pretty cool. So I'm going to keep this moving along. Myra, thank you very much. Uh, we'll come back to you. And I do know there's questions coming in from students, and I will get them at the end. But keep keep bringing them in. Um, Elizabeth, one for you. What would you advise students when researching international schools? Very very similar to even the US. Like you know, explore and be out there. There's a lot of different search vehicles. Um, whether they're school or they have access to um, platforms like SCORE um, and um, taking advantage. I know uh, Neve and many other representatives from the Irish universities um, do a lot stateside and are often present at um, NACAC fairs as well as, um, so, you know, not only in person, but some of the virtual fairs. So just as much as we encourage students, hey, get out there, look at these opportunities, um, a platform such as this. I know a number of my students hopefully are on this tonight um, and participating um, and just hearing and listening. So first and foremost, using a lot of the vehicles that we are already encouraging of them in terms of stateside, but then in terms of international, um, looking at particular programs like this, um, having someone like Carrie, if they know of students who have gone abroad, um, uh, talking to them or even students who might have been U.S. and went for a semester abroad. What is that experience like? Myra just mentioned it. Like sometimes they think they're going to miss so much and they realize um, that it, it could be just as worthwhile, if not even more with the global society, um, more of an experience. Um, and then definitely if, if your school is fortunate to host a college fair themselves or host college representatives, as we were able to host Neve and some other Irish representatives, um, admissions professionals, um, take the time to engage with them. If, it, if not only in person, then doing that research, looking on websites um, and seeing that so many schools will offer even virtual opportunities. You don't you know, necessarily have to be there in person. You could do a lot of research, still make a lot of connections um, with platforms such as this and um, be able to connect with admissions professionals, the faculty, the students. Um, there's just so much more outreach available. And, and then definitely, if you have the opportunity and the time and the resources, definitely get over and visit. Um, and I've found that students in the past too, sometimes um, they take advantage of some of the summer programs that um, the Irish universities offer. Um, so they might be thinking about it and that's a great way to get a great taste of it, um, to explore and understand um, what it would be like. Um, I know here on the East Coast, hey, a trip over to Ireland, a flight over to Ireland can be less time than a trip over to the West Coast. Um, so um, realizing that they're not that far from home and um, they could really have that great experience. So uh, again, depending on their time and resources, there's a lot of opportunities to engage. Um, and that would be the best way to question and ask and be courageous enough um, you know, to really get the information from a variety of different resources and take advantage of them. Fabulous, thanks Elizabeth. Um, and just to add to that, like myself and my colleagues from all the Irish universities, we are available all the time for Zoom calls. We'll do them anywhere in the world. As you can see, Kerry's in Philly. I'd often be in Mexico or Canada or the US. Um, and I do love a good 3 a.m. call uh, when back home in Ireland to talk to people on the West Coast. We don't restrict our times to 
nine to five. We understand that we try to be flexible around you guys. Uh, okay, Jacqueline, you're up next. What are the key elements students should prepare if they're looking at applying internationally or what would you recommend to them? Right. So a couple of things, first of all, because the school programs, the courses are offered a little differently. Um, students should start with a lot of self-exploration right now. We don't have, uh, they won't have the opportunity to really be switching majors. So much of the advice here domestically is if you don't like what you're getting into, don't worry about it. Just go anyway, pick the school and then you can switch majors. Uh, they should, we don't really you know, um, we don't really advise that students or what I was going to say is the Irish universities don't really have that opportunity. You need to really know what you want to do. You need to know your course discipline. So they should be doing a little self exploration to make sure that if they want to get into engineering, that they know that that's really what they want to do. If they want to get into humanities or they want to get into something else, because they will not have the flexibility to jump as easily as they would be able to. The gift there, however, as has been mentioned, uh, is that you don't have to go through the the GEs though that we are used to here. So the cool thing is students can jump right into what they're doing. So if they really, if you have that student or you are that student that really knows what you want to do, um, then the uh, international schools are a fantastic opportunity for you to jump right in and get your coursework done. But you should be doing that self exploration to make sure you're picking an appropriate course. Uh, the next thing would be research the courses that are available. Make sure that you know what they are. They're a little bit different. So uh, you're going to want to really look in to see, okay, so now I know what I think it is that I want to do or what I'm passionate about what is the best course that's out there that's an international course that i could align myself up with that would that would create the best result for me um and then of course uh i know you said three but i've got a i've got only two extra so i'm only i'm going to throw in an extra as a bonus um one of them would be it's a different type of education meaning so many of our students are so used to having uh, a very structured academic approach to their classes where they have uh, you've got these many assignments to do this week you're going to be graded on it you've got a quiz where they're used to being spoon-fed exactly what they need to do in a program and when you go abroad you're going to be given a whole lot of reading materials and you need to be pretty self-disciplined and self-motivated to be able to do that so if you want an abroad experience make sure you take a good deep you know dive into who you are and how you best study and if you don't have those skills it's okay i'd still recommend applying but make sure that you're developing those skills and you're doing what it takes to get on track so that you know you can succeed and you're not surprised uh and then the last one is super short and easy uh but that's the obvious if you don't have a passport you should probably get started on that or make sure it's updated. Uh, I can't tell you how many people have gone to travel abroad and they went, oh gosh, I didn't realize it expired or it expires in a week. Um, so make sure that you're moving forward with everything that you need to do on that front so that when you do need to get to the educational visa process, you've got one less thing to worry about. But those are things, even if you don't know which school you're gonna go to, you can get those things moving now while you're continuing to explore the different options that you have. Fabulous, I love the passport one. Um, I think everyone should have their passport, even if they're not really ready to travel yet, but get a 10 year passport, and then you can jump on a plane whenever you want, <laughs> um, which exactly. is always great. Always great. Thank you, Jacqueline. OK, Kerry, up to you, because I know we do have some mature students that are on the, the seminar and also attending the fair. And I'd love to know, how did you find applying um, as a mature student um, to a university in Ireland? Yes, yeah, so I kind of was an interesting student. I graduated high school. I went to university in Illinois for a year, didn't really like it. So I left and I went to community college. And then I had the idea of wanting to live in Ireland permanently, which is still my plan. It is my plan. Um, but um, I found out university in Ireland was cheaper, more affordable, and it was a great education. So I started looking into it and applying as a mature student it was a, at the time that i did it in 2018 it was a bit different because I, I had to retake the act <laughs> at, at 24 <laughs> so that was a bit rough but now i think most universities are test flexible so yeah thank you so you don't have to take the act which is great and um it was it was relatively simple i of my like i 
my college credits that I had from the university and from the community college to help bolster my application. But because the programs are so structured and it was mostly gen ed classes that I had taken, none of those credits transferred, but I still went through with it because three years in Ireland was less expensive than two years in the U S. So I made that decision. And then, um, in, sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Um, and then just in terms of, yeah, so I, I still use like my high school transcripts, but I put more emphasis on my resume. So I showed that I had, you know, I had worked, I had experience in like leadership and I was doing business. So I had um, experience in business through my, you know, serving jobs and, you know, my little internship at a medical care facility. So it's just, if you're applying as a mature student, you would use your resume more than your transcripts, but you would still include your transcripts from your high school. Perfect. And I'm going to jump in on that note. And thanks, Carrie. Um, in Ireland, you might see it called a CV. So if you're putting in your application and it asks for your CV, that's your resume. Um, small little cultural difference. Between um, okay, we're going to flip the chat this time. And we're going to have our my wonderful colleagues ask me some questions. And then I'm going to get to your questions as, uh, within the next five minutes. So Myra, I think you have a question for me first. I do have a question. So one of the biggest hurdles, I think, to getting students to apply um, internationally is they think it's going to be a very hard and complex process. So what's the best way for U.S. students to apply to Irish universities? That's a great question. Um, it's not complicated at all. We probably have one of the most flexible and easiest ways for students to apply. Um, all of the Irish universities, you can apply directly on their websites. So you just go to the program that you want to apply and hit apply and submit. There is four of us then also on the Common App. So you can, if you are applying to one of the four on the Common App, you can submit through the Common App. Um, very simple. We look for quite similar documentation that you apply for when you're applying in the US if you are going for a test flexible option program. Um, and what we mean by test flexible, it's kind of like test optional, but with a little bit more needed. So we call it test flexible here in Ireland. And then if you're applying for to the Common App, you just literally submit it the way you're applying for a US school. Yeah, so thank you. Okay, who's, Elizabeth, have you got a question for me? Thanks, Moira, great question. I just follow up on that for I think yeah, my own course. what for what for Irish universities are on the common app besides University of Limerick the other three. So University of Limerick, Mary Immaculate College, I want to say UCD and Maynooth. Um, okay. But I will double check that. And if any of my colleagues are on the call, please pop it into the chat. Uh, but those are the four that I understand are on the Common App right now. And I know that uh, DCU and I think Galway might be looking to get onto it soon enough and Cork, but I'm not sure. Okay. Thanks for that. Uh, Appreciate it. Yet. No problem. Yeah. No, because it's a great sell for me. Most of our students utilize the Common App. Yeah. And I'm like, if you're thinking about it, it's already on there. So it does make it easier. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think before Jacqueline kind of referred to it too with the U.S. students um, in going to Ireland, the focus on identifying a major and an interest. Um, how how is a degree different in Ireland than the U.S.? What's the structure um, of the studies? That's great. So majority of the programs will be four years in duration, and the reason for that being is we offer a exchange program you have the opportunity to go to one of our european partners or internationally for a semester so not only are you getting an international experience within ireland then you're also getting another cultural international experience again for a semester so 90 percent of irish degrees will offer that exchange program there might be a handful that won't just down to accreditations like certain engineering programs may have the option to do a semester abroad or may not uh, depending on the accreditations required for the engineering programs um but then also uh, at the university of limerick all of our undergraduate degrees have internships or cooperative education or work placement whichever language you want to want to put on it so that means that you spend six to eight months off campus working and a lot of the other Irish universities will offer that in certain programs as well um so that brings it up to the full four years as Jacqueline had mentioned there's no general education module so you really need to know what you want to get into 
uh, in terms of then actual physical structures were the same as the US. We go from September to December, January to May and the summer off for undergraduate students. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Thanks. No problem. Okay, Jacqueline, do you have anything for me? I do. So in light of students, the reason they're going to school is they want to have an intern. They, they want to get a job at the end of it. And so, of course, they want an internship and an internship is, is certainly going to place them for a job. And we have a lot of students that are interested in how am I going to get an internship opportunity in a country that I'm not familiar with? Is this going to be something that I am able to do as an American student? And of course, the other thing that students have are study abroad interests. That's a big part of of students education, they're wondering if uh, I go study in Ireland or any other international program, will I still have an ability to participate in a study abroad program anywhere else? Can I still do a study abroad? Yes, absolutely. So that's a great one. And it leads in from Elizabeth's question, which is brilliant. Uh, so the internships, absolutely. And the really important thing about the internships is the majority of students will actually get jobs after their internships with companies that they've done their, their placement with. We have a, a student at the University of Limerick that is going into Fortier that has a job offer in Ireland for when they graduate in May time, which is brilliant. And the company they're working for has a US-based office and an Irish-based office. So the student will be able to go between both as a, as a US citizen. She's getting the best of both worlds, which is unbelievable. Um, the internships is really, really vital part because obviously in Ireland, we have a huge amount of uh, multinational companies, as Myra had mentioned earlier on in the call, uh, ranging from like Ernest & Young have just announced 900, 600 new jobs in Ireland um, in business, finance, accounting, all those different areas as well. Um, and for Irish universities, we work very closely with these big companies, Ernest & Young, Johnson & Johnson, in order to make sure that we have the, the internships and the related relationships with them to make sure not only are students getting that opportunity, but they also then are getting taught the most up-to-date content that the companies are looking for, which is brilliant. Um, I'm not, you know, personally, I, I, I do think we have one of the best internship programs in, in, in the world based here in Ireland because of those multinationals and the feed in from them. Uh, and then for the study abroad opportunity, I love this. It's very it's different compared to the US in the fact that it's a free exchange. So students won't pay anything extra and they get to go to France. They could be in Paris for for four months and jet-setting then on trains at the weekend to, to Germany and Amsterdam and all over the place, but also getting that fabulous French culture or Italian or Poland or wherever they end up studying. Um, and the fact that it's a, uh, there's no extra charges for it and there's a stipend under the Erasmus program to do that, I think, is magnificent. And then for employers, when they do go and graduate from getting a, a bachelor's degree in Ireland, they have unbelievable talking points. Not only do they have a reference from their internships and it's an equivalent, like it's a substantial amount of time. They also have the cultural experience that that employers are looking for for straight away when they look at their CV, they're saying, willing to try new things, ambitious, successful, has experience, knows not to wear ripped jeans and cons in the office, uh, you know, has office etiquette, uh, for when, and they're going to spend less time training them. So those are really great opportunities for, for students when, when coming over. Brilliant. Thanks, Jacqueline. Uh, Kerry, do you have anything for me? Um, I think just generally, like, what advice do you have for students that are applying to universities in Ireland? Fabulous. Great question. So the advice I would give to students is to really do their research because you are going to be locked in. And I think it can be really overwhelming because of all the choices you have now. Um, I, I couldn't imagine what it would be like trying to trying to do it all again um i'd love to do it all again but i could imagine how daunting it is but really do your research and when you're looking at university it's about making sure one the program is the right choice for you but two the university is the right fit okay in ireland we're very much about helping the students through that process because not only are you going to be academically you know there you're there to grow up as a young adult and develop who you are and what type of person you want to be so you want to look at what's around the university what type of city it is everything like that and if it's going to be Dublin, Galway, Cork, Limerick, um, 
you know, we'll all welcome you with open arms, whichever whichever one of us you choose to decide to apply to and come to. Um, but research, contact students, contact the the reps like like myself and and Kerry and others that are on on the, the um, seminars and in the the fair today. Fabulous. Okay, we have some questions coming in um, from students, so I'm going to try fly through them because I'm conscious we have five minutes. Um, Every school seems to have a different brand requirements when comp comparing CEO to SAT GPA. Is there a general rule or conversion? Colin, unfortunately not. You do have to contact us all individually. And I know it's a, it's a little bit of a, a hard one. And I know the counselors are in the same boat as you guys trying to get all the entry requirements from us. But we do publish them on our websites and you can just email us and we all have them in presentations. And what I call it, I, I have a little flyer that I call my cheat sheet that, that outlines all the requirements. So that's very handy. Any abnormal considerations due to pandemic to be aware of? Uh, no. In Ireland, we have a huge vaccination rate. So we are operating as if post-COVID or pre-COVID. Um, there's, I think, three point eight million people vaccinated out of a population of 4.5. And bear in mind, you know, kids under 12 can't be vaccinated, medical conditions. So that makes up a large, large portion of the, the population. Do Irish universities recognize U.S. or Canadian GD, GED certificates on application? Kerry, you might answer that one for me. Yeah, I would say most would because it, it's really just showing that you have the same level of education um, as someone who graduated from a high school. So most universities would accept it. Perfect. Another question, is there a difficulty for me if my spouse is an Irish citizen where I am a US citizen? No, there is no difficulty there at all. Uh, it can also go, the um, that just means your 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 spouse can, can move over and you could actually get your Irish citizenship if you are married uh, through your spouse as well. Uh, also, I understand we don't need a visa to study in Ireland, but I would need to have some visa permit to be eligible to work. That is, you do actually need a visa. So this can be quite confusing. And you do. there's two different types of visas. There's an entry visa, and then there's a kind of like a permit to stay. There you go. Carrie's got it right there. <laughs> uh, it's known as an IRP card. So you do register with our immigration services when you arrive. So if you're entering into Ireland with a U.S. passport, you do not need a visa prior to flying. However, when you get to our immigration services, they'll ask you a bunch load of questions and then they'll stamp your passport saying you have uh, 30 days to register with our immigration services. But each of us at the Irish universities have an immigration visa and immigration team that will set up the appointments for you with the immigration department uh, when you first arrive to get everything set up. And then with that IRP card, you do have the right to study for up to 20 hours a week during your academic term. If you're on internship, you get it full time. Okay, I'm conscious we have about two minutes left. So I want to see if there's any questions for any of my colleagues. Gary, one for you. I'm curious how the panel ended up in this college counseling career. So how you ended up in college counseling. Um, I was, you know, going through my program in business and I saw an email about being an international student ambassador while I was studying. And I was like, I'm so passionate about students, like learning about studying in Ireland. And I, it's one of my biggest like things that I like to talk about. So I started that and then I worked it through the university, through that capacity for three years. And once I graduated just this past May, um, I accepted the role to travel around the U.S. and do it professionally. So that is how I got into this role. <laughs> That's fabulous. Thank you. Um, there's a lot of questions coming in, but I am conscious that we do have just one minute left and I will try and get my colleagues um, to send over the questions that have come in that we can follow up with on a separate email or somehow like that. Uh, I want to thank my colleagues uh, for taking their time out of their busy days because uh, I know college applications are flying in. So Jacqueline, Elizabeth and Moira, thank you so much. It means the world to me that you're able to join and give your expertise to these wonderful students. Kerry, thank you. I know your, your, your advice as a previous student and as a, a fellow representative has been hugely appreciative. So um, I know we can't give a round of applause, but I'll give a bit of a clap to my <laughs> colleagues to say thank you. Uh, 
and thank you all for joining us tonight. I hope you found this very helpful and informative. And if anybody does have any follow-up questions, you can contact myself and I can put you in touch with my colleagues or I will hopefully be able to answer the questions uh, directly myself. And I'm just popping my email address into the discussion panel there. Fabulous. Okay. Have a great evening, everybody. Or Thanks nice. for bringing us together. Nice to meet yeah, everyone. Thank <laughs> Thanks, Thank everyone. Thank you.